What is it with American cars and fake scoops? It drives me crazy, but for some reason, the American cars, the cool looking ones, especially muscle cars and so on, are loaded with these things. Half the time it's just there for cosmetics. And you know what? I'm totally against that. So every single car that I own, every single American car that I own, from now on until the end of time, I'm going to take these fake scoops and make them functional so that they can actually do what they look like they're doing. And now, our feature presentation. So what is this piece of trash lying on my garage floor? Well, it's part of a fairly expensive set that I bought off of eBay. Something from an 82 Trans Am. Now, there was a time when the hood scoops on the Trans Am were actually not fake. It was a special time. I think we all forget that there was a period back in the day when cars actually had personality. You know, it's not like going and buying a Toyota truck or a Camry or a Honda Civic or whatever it is, there was a time when, although cheesy, gaudy, you can call it what you want, kitsch, the cars, especially American cars, were really fun and interesting. And there was an option for the Trans Am. It was called the HO engine or high output engine. And that specific engine combination came with a functional hood scoop. Anybody who knows about performance and engines knows that, first of all, colder air combusts better. Number two, if you can force air in, I mean, that's what turbochargers and superchargers are all about. If you can force air into the engine, this also helps performance. So this cowl induction hood kind of does a little bit of both. It's getting this high pressure air kind of sucked or forced into it because the air travels over the hood of the car, hits the windshield, creates a high pressure zone, and that air is cold and it goes directly into the carburetor or in my case anyway, the TBI system. Alas, this option only lasted for two years from the 1982 to 1984 Pontiac Trans Am. But they kept the hood, just made it non-functional. They put a blanking plate on it like on my formula and they named it various different things. It was called the Power Bulge Hood. It was called the turbo hood, etc, etc. And it looked the same. It was the same hood, but like I said, just non-functional. So I got to thinking, since it's the same hood, could I just purchase all of the working bits off of an old real functional Trans Am? Would they just fit? Could I just bolt it straight on? Well, I thought I'd give it a shot. And I searched around on eBay and I found a complete set taken out of an 82 Trans Am for about $400, which is ridiculously expensive. But you know what? I really wanted to do this. So I bought all the bits. Let's see if they fit. So the first thing I needed to do was basically disassemble everything. It still had the original hood insert that was red from the 1982 Trans Am. And I wanted to replace it with the white one that was on my hood. So I took it all apart and I was quite surprised to find that everything just bolted together, which was fantastic. Of course, uh, it was also good to get an idea of how this thing worked and how all the water drainage works. It's actually very well designed and uh, checked that the door was actuating, opening and closing, that kind of thing. Because there's a little flap in there, a little door that uh, is supposed to open only when you accelerate hard. We'll get to that later. But I decided first, let's put this kind of chicken wire grill thing into my hood, see if that'll fit in there first. And then from there, we'll try to get this whole kind of unit thing installed into the hood. This is working out very well. This will basically just fit in there. I'm very impressed. So let's see how it goes. You know, surprisingly, all the bolt holes lined up and I could just bolt the whole system in without any issue whatsoever. So, it's in. I mean, it's in there solid. It's not going anywhere. Let's take a look. Yeah, 
Now, there's this little actuator motor which opens a flap in there. Now, I, to be honest, I don't know why I'd ever want it closed, so I'll, unless I lived in like a snow climate or something. Probably gonna jam it open, but let's see if this works. Got my negative. I'm gonna touch the positive and let's see if we get some movement up here. What do you know? It still works. And yeah, I just ended up jamming it open anyway. In the future, I'll probably put a switch so that I can manually turn it on and off from inside the car. But you know what? I've tested it in the rain. If I have to go through a car wash, I can just put a piece of plastic over the, the covering on the inside of the hood. But yeah, we have to get to the inside of the hood now because the top part's done. But how does this actually connect to the carburetor slash throttle body? Well, with all the bits that I bought from eBay, it actually came with a whole air cleaner unit. And how it worked on the older cars is there's like a rubber gasket which fits between that device on the hood and the air cleaner, the top of the air cleaner. And then of course the air comes in and is forced directly into the throttle body. Thing is, I didn't know how it would all line up. I didn't really know if it would even fit. Luckily this is a TBI engine, not a TPI, because it won't fit in a TPI engine obviously. But after playing around a little bit and actually cleaning up the lid from the other air cleaner, I realized I could just stick it on top of my existing air cleaner. The thing is I wasn't sure how to position it so that it would line up. But once I cleaned it all up, the answer presented itself. I was always wondering how you line it up, but there it says snorkel. I didn't see that before because it was so rusty and crap. So you obviously place this where the snorkel goes. Show you. So these cars are very restrictive when it comes to air intake. It's only got a single snorkel and that's how it gets all of its air. And that snorkel is where you line it up. You put the arrows on either side and guess what? It lines up perfectly. Now, to test, obviously I had to put it all together. I stuck a GoPro underneath the hood slash bonnet lowered it down just to make sure that it was actually sealing up and in the correct place and guess what it was i think that worked okay. <clears throat> so now theoretically when i start this up we should be able to hear the air being sucked in let's find out this is going to be fun feel the air being sucked in. That's awesome. That is just freaking awesome. It's now functional. To say, just getting in the car and seeing that instead of that blank off plate is already just so much nicer. The fact that it's functional, well, I mean, that just makes it amazing. Let's go for a little, little ride and see how it does. not gonna play around here doing this little modification definitely increased the responsiveness and the power of this car and noticeably you know just from me driving it for so long and getting used to it I'm going to be totally honest and say that this must have increased the power of this car by a good 15 to 20 percent it also sounds better because you can hear the induction you can actually hear the engine now through the hood I'm just glad that my car is reaching a little bit of its potential because we all know this era of cars pretty restricted when it comes to all the emissions equipment and all that kind of thing. But doing something like this, well, it fits on the car like it's supposed to. It really gives me the satisfaction that I've improved the thing. And it's cool as all hell. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting and until next time you know the drill. Do all that car guy stuff like not crashing and riding off of cliffs and, and all that and uh, see you in the next one.